guys, I'm Equinim. Um, today, <laughs> have a little treat. So, I'm going to be talking about drugs, and usually I do something in the spirit of like what I'm talking about, you know? So, I put on nausea, and I'm using the super secret settings, and this is, I'm gonna have to build a house. That's my goal. So I should probably specify what type of drugs I'm talking about. Okay, this might make people a little sick, won't it? Maybe I should just go with the super secret settings. All right, so I'll be playing like this. <laughs> and I have to build a house. And I'll try not to die, but I cannot confirm nor deny the likelihood of that event. So basically, I'm just gonna, oh god. I'm just gonna go over my opinion on specifically recreational drugs. So like, think alcohol, marijuana, tobacco, whatever. And I'm not talking about like legalization or anything. I'm talking about philosophically, what is the impact of using them? This is, oh my God, this is so weird. Those horses, yes they are. I need wood. So basically I'll start with my overall view. So if you're using drugs, if you're using recreational drugs, it's gonna be to try and be happy, right? My opinion, is that you cannot outsource happiness. Happiness isn't in a bottle. Happiness isn't in um, a plant. Happiness is knowing what your purpose is um, and being a good person. That's what happiness is. It's more of a state and less of a feeling. I think the Greeks had a word for it that makes everything a lot less confusing. I'm pretty sure it's eudaimonia. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, I am not Greek. Now my specific gripe with recreational drugs is usually they're going to impair your rationality. Uh, to some extent, and just in general, you're trying to outsource your happiness to something else besides your own mind. So obviously within the Stoic philosophy, anything that impairs your rationality isn't going to be good, because your rationality is the only thing you can control, and you're just losing control over that immediately. And now you might say, well, Equinim, I just want to have some fun. Okay, let's think about this. So I'm going to start by asking a few questions. So first of all, is a good person trustworthy? Now, if you think about this question, you might think, okay, so being trustworthy is a good quality, right? So a good person would be trustworthy. And you might come to your own other conclusions. Another way to come to that is, um, would a good person break trust? And the answer is no, almost certainly. So that's another way to just arrive to the conclusion that a good person is trustworthy. Okay, so the next question, is someone who is drunk trustworthy? And I mean, surely you would say no, right? You've lost control over your rationality. You're not likely to meet any obligations you've met. Okay, so final question. Can a good person get drunk? Because if a good person is trustworthy and a drunk person is not, then a good person can't get drunk, right? Am I in a cave? What? Oh, I just had like a, a moment. Oh, I just lost all my orientation. Okay. Wait. Huh? I am so confused. I gotta go back up. So, I mean, obviously, with the conclusions we've had, a good person cannot get drunk because they won't be trustworthy anymore. Obviously, I'm not saying everyone that gets drunk is a terrible person. No, I'm talking about the philosophical term, good person. I think you can be a decent person and still do all that stuff, but you can never be fully trustworthy because trust is an ongoing process. So, any break in that trust... Um, just removes all trustworthiness. Be like, for example, let's say you were told to keep a secret. No matter how trustworthy you are when you're not drunk, when you're drunk, you might not meet that obligation, and you don't know if you will or not. If you tell the secret to someone while you're drunk, the trust is already broken. Even though it was just for that one moment you weren't trustworthy, the entire concept of trust is broken, because all it takes is one moment to break the trust. So basically what I'm saying is, if your goal is to be the best person you can be, you can't impair yourself. You can't make yourself less of a good person just because you want to have some fun. I'm starving, aren't I? I need to find food. A lot of this applies specifically to alcohol, which is the most socially accepted drug. Oh god, it's nighttime. In other cases, though, it still applies to the extent that like, you're losing control over some part of yourself. And if you don't have control, then how can you be trustworthy? How can you be good if what you're doing isn't your choice. And I have a million other reasons why I don't like drugs. I can't list them all in a video and I also don't want to like overly offend anybody. <laughs> what am I doing? Oh no. There's the pieces of my house, I think. Uh, oh crap. Oh 
Oh no. Oh no. Maybe this isn't a good place. I think I'm, I'm gonna find an open area. <laughs> oh no, I left my food back there. Oh, I'm gonna starve. Oh, eat, 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 run, run. It's so hard to escape when I can't even, <laughs> I can't even see. Hold on, I'm gonna try these mushrooms. Maybe that'll give me some better effect. Okay, this is fine. This is fine. I don't regret eating those mushrooms at all. All right, let's find a good place for my house, shall we? Oh, oh boy. Oh, there's some planes over there. Okay, that's a good place for my house. Okay, um, I'm thinking about like right here. And I'm not gonna use logs because that would take way too long. So let's just, let's just, okay. I don't want you here. How do I hit it? How do I hit it? Shoo. Shoo. Okay. I think I'm going to build my house here, but there is a zombie and I don't know how to hit it. And I'm, I can't place blocks. <laughs> okay. This is fine. Back off, please back off. Okay. Okay. This might be a bad place to be in. Oh, eat the food. Eat the food. That didn't restore any health. Oh, right. This is in a later update. In later updates, you eat like one steak and all of your health is back. But nope. Not this. Why are there so many? Shoo. 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 Be gone. Oh, right. This is 1.8. I can just jitter click. Go. Go. Yes. I'm so good at this game. Okay. Okay, I ran out of that wood, so I'm just going to have to go with this. Now, right now, you might be saying, well, Equinim, this is kind of funny. You look like you're having fun while you're trying to uh, simulate the experience of doing drugs. And the answer to that is no. No, I'm not having fun. <laughs> but also, look at this house. Like, this house is terrible. Now, obviously, a Minecraft house doesn't matter. But this house is a metaphor, okay? It, this whole story is an allegory. Do you know that word? I, I barely know that word. It's like an extended metaphor. So basically, the house is a metaphor for whatever you're trying to sustain uh, while you're drunk or you're high or whatever, and you've lost your rationality or you've lost control over yourself. So maybe this house is a metaphor. Okay. Okay. So maybe this house is a metaphor for your family life or for a relationship or for your friendship with somebody or for your own trust. You're impaired and you can't optimally actually do what you want to do because you're drunk. Like, look at how much I ruined this, and now just apply that to, like, your friendship. Uh, just because you wanted to have fun for a little bit. Like, that's not worth it. Read a book. Read a book. <laughs> just go out and don't drink. That's fine, too. Just go out with friends. It's not that hard. I don't know. Go to Steak and Shake. Steak and Shake has good cheese fries. Everything else will probably, like, give you a heart attack. But, you know, they've got good cheese fries, so it's okay. And a lot of you don't live in the United States. Just go get a burger. Who cares? Killed by my own brother. What else could I have expected? 